San Diego County has a large Asian American and Pacific Islander community, representing ethnicities from all over the world. Each one is woven into the cultural fabric of San Diego. California has the largest Korean American population in the U.S., with more than 20,000 who call San Diego home. CBS 8's Kelly Hesedal tells us why Korean culture is alive and well these days and taking center stage. <laughs> We're not just throwing down on the dance floor, we're throwing down in life. That's how we approach life. That's the kind of the Korean spirit, right? And the Ajima spirit. Ajima EXP, an all-female dance crew. If you're a member, you live in San Diego, you're probably Korean. You must have fierce commitment to badassery. And you're definitely over the age of 35. Don't even think about responding if you're under 40. Founder, Leanne Kim. I'm a former broadcaster, but I own uh, a video production company. Group members, Dr. Janet Kim. I'm a physician. I specialize in rheumatology. And Angela Chun. I'm an attorney. I own my own law firm. So tell me why you started Ajima. The word Ajima is intrinsically Korean. It means simply middle-aged woman. So we wanted to like reclaim that word and then just redefine it as something positive. Ajima EXP is simply a way for us to celebrate the state that we, you know, the, the, the phase of life that we're in right now as middle-aged women and be proud of that. They spend months practicing. And why did you want to become a member of it? I just wanted something something positive and different in my life. It's kind of liberating in a way, you know, to try to do something different outside of your comfort zone. Their costumes include fanny packs, wigs. A typical middle-aged Korean woman, she would have short permed hair. And colorful visors. Because you don't want any sun on your face, right? right? Protect the skin. We're playing into their stereotype and then we flip it over on its head. Here's video of Ajima at Zion Market. <laughs> When you flash them all the place, <laughs> what kind of reaction do you guys get? Oh my gosh, everybody loves it. They bust out their cameras. Here they are at Balboa Park. Their most recent flash mob was at Fashion Valley. The reaction is amazing. I think people are shocked. It's a blast, you know, it takes a lot of work. Like, oh my God, do we have the moves down? And then in the end, it doesn't matter. We're breaking down barriers and we're shining this great spotlight on older women, on Asian American women and Korean women. Korean culture has exploded in popularity in recent years, from K-pop, groups like BTS and Blackpink, to K-dramas, to Netflix shows like Squid Game. My sons, you know, because they're young boys that have cool haircuts, everyone thinks that they're BTS and they're automatically really cool. It's finally cool to be Korean. But it wasn't always like this. I remember growing up in the 70s in the Midwest People didn't know where Korea was. They asked me if I was North Korean. Oh, are you Korean? Yeah. So does that mean you speak Chinese? When I was growing up, you know, I remember asking my mom to stop packing me kimbap because I was embarrassed. My daughter is asking me for kimbap. I'm just really proud that Koreans are getting a little bit more uh, notice, maybe a little bit more appreciation because we have a lot to offer. They say it finally feels like Korean culture is part of American culture. This video from the Korean Cultural Center of Los Angeles shows just how mainstream it is. In January, thousands of all ages and ethnicities packed Balboa Park to watch a K-pop group perform on Korea Day. I was like, but here it is. I'm, I'm witnessing, I'm witnessing this huge like 180 change of how society views people like me. And I just felt like, I just kind of, stood there and just embraced the moment. A moment of pride, a moment of joy. I'm so happy that um, we're, we're living in this kind of era where being Korean is celebrated. Kelly Hesedal, CBS 8.